It may be the most revolutionary invention of the last 50 years. Since the invention of microchips, they have evolved and become super electronic brains capable of performing over 1 billion calculations per second. Making these extraordinary miniature electronic minds is one of the most complex tasks ever undertaken. But how are silicon microprocessors made? Discover the amazing production process of millions of microchips in a semiconductor factory. Modern microprocessors contain billions of transistors on a single chip. Most electrical devices today use one. In 1958, the inventor of the integrated circuit, Jack Colby, managed to place a single transistor in his design. The latest generation uses almost 1 billion transistors. And according to Moore's law, that number doubles every two years. This company produces 70 billion microchips a year, used in many devices, from washing machines to smart cars. Each one is a miracle of miniature manufacturing. A processor works thanks to the circuits of millions of individual components called transistors. The more transistors we place on a chip, the faster and more powerful it will be. In this strange and futuristic-looking factory, silicon wafers, which are the foundation of all modern microchips, are produced. The substrates for microchips are made from quartz sand and are called silicon wafers. Silicon has special properties because it is what we call a semiconductor. This means that depending on how the silicon is treated, it can conduct or block electrical current. This property makes it perfect as a base for the millions of tiny transistors needed to make a modern microprocessor. The problem is that because these transistors are so small, the silicon base they rest on must be completely perfect. It took decades to perfect the process of producing silicon with a perfect monocrystalline structure for manufacturing these wafers. A large monocrystal is extracted from the purified silicon melt. The process starts with polycrystalline silicon heated to about 1420 degrees Celsius inside a special seal furnace. This furnace has been purged with argon gas to remove the air. The resulting molten silicon is spun in a crucible. The result is a silicon crystal weighing about 200 kilograms and having a diameter of about 200 millimeters. However, impurities pose a threat to these impeccable silicon crystals. The crystal is so strong that it supports its entire weight with a single thread 3 millimeters thick. So after several tests with chemicals and x-rays, it is placed in a silicon wafer cutter. This 10-ton wire saw uses a network of very thin wires moving very quickly to produce silicon wafers that are only two-thirds of a millimeter thick and have a purity of 99.9%. .9%. But once cut, microscopic marks remain on the surface, so they need to be polished through a process called lapping. But even after passing through this modern polisher, the wafers are not smooth enough, so they need to be polished again through a chemical process. The result is silicon wafers with a surface roughness of less than 0.1 nanometers, now completely polished. Finally, they are ready to start circuit design using computer-aided design software. Engineers create the detailed circuit design. Once the circuit design is complete, a thorough verification is carried out to ensure it meets the required specifications. 25 wafers are packed in each hermetically sealed container and sent on a journey that will take them through hundreds of manufacturing steps. Placing millions of transistors on the tiny wafers is the job of chip manufacturers. The challenge for this factory is that these transistors are about 200 times smaller than a red blood cell. And making something so small is an enormous production challenge. Fortunately, there is a machine that does it. It is a photolithography machine and can print billions of transistors on silicon wafers every hour. Before entering the machine, each wafer is coated with a light reactive liquid. This is called photoresist and reacts to light like camera film in a dark room. The photoresist is a very light sensitive chemical agent, which is why this room has yellow light. Otherwise, normal daylight would spoil the wafer. Photolithography techniques transfer the circuit structures to the wafer similarly to slide projection. The machine emits a laser that passes through the design plane of a transistor and engraves it on the silicon wafer. Just like in a photo, this leaves an image of the transistor on the wafer. When the chemical is removed, the design remains as if it were a photographic image. But to place all the components on the wafer, it must be done layer by layer. 
To complete the work, the wafers undergo the same cycle up to 40 times, repeating the process between 15 and 40 times, and leaving unengraved. The areas that are not exposed build up the transistors layer by layer like mini skyscrapers. The result is hundreds of microchips, each of which has more than 1 billion transistors. The downside is that to meet the demand for increasingly powerful devices and computers, the number of transistors on a chip must double every two years. The biggest challenge engineers face is finding new ways to improve the laser that engraves the shape of each transistor. They discover that by passing the beam through a layer of water, it behaves like sunlight passing through a magnifying glass, increasing the beam's intensity and reducing the size of each transistor to make it about five times smaller than the smallest bacteria. But assembling machines that rely on this kind of precision is a real nightmare. It takes three months to assemble and test the 800 circuits, 1300 wires, and 400 boards that make up these water-enhanced machines to make transistors. The finished product will help produce smaller, more powerful microchips. Working on this microscopic scale presents a big problem for microchip manufacturers. When a transistor is only a ten-thousandth of a millimeter wide, the slightest speck of dust can cause the electronic equivalent of a short circuit. A single particle landing in one area can destroy a chip. So before workers start working in the factory, they must put on a protective suit. The manufacturing process takes place in a clean room with nearly 18,000 square meters thanks to 12,000 tons of air conditioning equipment. The air in this room is a thousand times cleaner than that of an operating room. Each employee must take an air shower every time they enter a clean room to remove invisible particles of dirt and dust. And all the air inside the factory is renewed every two minutes, making it 10,000 times cleaner than the air outside. Copper dominates the next step of the process. The thinnest interconnecting wires connect billions of separate transistors to form the integrated circuits. Before this happens, cleaning is essential for the wafers, as particles lurk at every stage of the manufacturing process. Before pouring copper into the trenches for the interconnections, a barrier layer is applied. This helps prevent short circuits and ensures reliability. Then, the trenches are filled with copper. The excess copper is ground down to the edges of the trenches. This isolates each interconnection from the others. In two months, the wafer is ready. Huge integrated circuits formed by conductors several kilometers long connect 100 billion transistors at multiple levels. And that in a space no larger than a fingernail. The finished silicon wafers contain up to a thousand different microchips and more than four trillion circuit components. Now it's just a matter of cutting and trimming, and the long journey from being sand to a circuit board will be over. The final step in the production of microprocessors is the encapsulation of the chips. To prepare for this step, tin and silver granules are applied to the wafer. These will bond the chip to the frame. What was once a worthless pile of sand can now be sold for hundreds of dollars per gram. Like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating notifications to keep learning.